DJ, how are you doing, man? Good, my Irish brethren. Good to talk to. Good to talk to you too, as well. The world heavyweight champion from the WWE. How does that feel? That feels fantastic. I never get tired of that. Uh, never get tired of hearing it. You never get tired of uh, hearing it, and you never get tired of carrying around the big gold belt. Not at all, fellas. Not at all. It's, uh, it's definitely um, an honor and a privilege to hold the championship with so many uh, greats in WWE and, and, and literally in wrestling of hell. So. I uh, just hope I'm doing a good enough job, and uh, I just, um, I just, you know, enjoy being champion. Seamus, Seamus, we got to get to this. Why? What? What is up with the bro kick? Why is that being banned? What's up with that? Oh, you want to focus see that fella? I mean, I'm just scratching my head about that uh, for the last for the last week. So you want to focus see if he's the one who's banned us. Anything gonna happen to you if uh, you end up using it during a match? Well, you call me on Monday night. If I use it again, then uh, basically my, I'll be stripped of the world heavyweight championship. So he's made it clear that I can't really have any fun at all. Uh, I'm just, I mean, I was in Montreal, no plan on using a kick, even though I really just like David Otunga, you know, but uh, <laughs> the crowd asked for it. Uh, I gave it to them, and of course I got punished. So uh, I got to be careful though, because he does have everywhere he can literally strip me a title like that. So, uh, but I, I'm not a one trick pony fella. A DJ, I've got like a couple of other moves in my me, in me back pocket, including that clover leaf submission I've been using thanks to Dean Malenko. So, um, I'm literally, I'm, I'm, I think I'm covered. I, I definitely would like to see the Rio tap out to the Cloverleaf at Night of Champions on Sunday. Just between you and I, I'd also like to see him tap out to the Cloverleaf. <laughs> I think everybody would, yeah, at this stage. Loved, by the way, loved, love, love the deposition skit this past Monday night on Raw. Awesome job. Thank you, fella. A lot of people have been talking yet. I, uh, I think it was it was great, great chance to just to show... Uh, who Seamus really is, who I really am, and just then, you know, uh, I've had a lot of fun the last couple of years, but the last six to eight months, I've really started just, you know, I'm not shy to show who I am, I've literally been able to show people who who I am, and, you know, what I'm about, and, you know, how I carry on, and I'm just having fun and having a laugh, and I'm just enjoying my job, you know, and I'm, just, I'm the best job in the world, but, uh, you know, it's Irish, so definitely, yeah, we'll, we'll talk till the cows come home, we have a bit of fun, but we try not to take too many things seriously. Uh, so it was. I, I really enjoyed it, and I was. <laughs> I enjoyed seeing that Tonga's face too. Every time I just, uh, every time I wouldn't take him too seriously. He, he, that guy really takes stuff way too seriously. <laughs> and you called yourself an Irishman, but shouldn't sh- shouldn't you be calling yourself an Irish Jewishman? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Irish an Irish Jewman. Uh, Shane is uh, It's out. The words out. My full name. I, I literally never thought it would happen. But there you go. On Monday Night Raw. And basically, it came out to the entire world. So, you know, that's, that's what it is. Week by week, bit by bit, you know, different different parts of my name, personality come out. And, uh, people get more familiar with me. All right, so we're talking with the world heavyweight champion from the WWE, Seamus the Great White from Dublin, Ireland. So we got a big pay-per-view coming up this Sunday night. It's you and Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, it's a huge pay-per-view. It's not a chat. I think it's down the road in Boston or up the road. I'm not sure which one I can say there. It's up the road. 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 Up the road uh, from Connecticut. Um, it's basically it's going to be uh, myself taking on Del Rio, as we talked about with the bro kick. Um, Randy Orton taking on Dolph Ziggler. Uh, big tag, uh, World Heavyweight Championship tag match. Um, it's basically uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan. It's the odd couple of WWE. Taking on Kofi Kingston, or Truth, and of course Cena versus Cena in his own hometown of Boston against CM Punk for the WWE Championship. So it's huge, huge night. And of course, then we're coming to Bridgeport, Connecticut, Monday for a three-hour RAW. And who knows? Going into that, going into that uh, RAW, we can have to see a lot of new champions. Hopefully, we don't see a new champion when it comes to your title, though. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm hoping not at all. Touch wood, but yeah, I mean that's the, that's the thing about WWE for fans-wise, it keeps everything fresh and. You know, that they said they could walk into Raw with a host of new champions. As Cena could be walking into Bridgeport as WWE champion. You just don't know uh, what's going to happen. Of course, for my match as well, not only am I up against Alberto uh, with Ricardo Rodriguez and David Otunga, I also have to, get, uh, to be aware of Dolph Ziggler on that money in the bank contract. So, um, you know, it's it's non-stop for me, fella. It's 24-7. Always got to be on my toes, man. Always got to be on my toes. So, checking into your background, Seamus, I found this to be interesting. Uh, what was it like to work personal security before your wrestling career for guys like uh, Bono and you, too? <laughs> uh, I worked in a nightclub in Dublin when I was, I was double jobbing, and Bono used to come in all the time. 
Um, so it was fun, but um, it's it's pretty cool now be, uh, being able to be call yourself world heavyweight champion. I mean, Bono always calls me looking for autographs, to talk to the world heavyweight champion, just talk to me. But um, I just I, I can't take his calls anymore. There's just too much. I just have to keep fobbing them off. You know what I mean? I just let it go to voicemail all the time now because <laughs> Bono's too much, man. He just keeps harassing me all the time. Is he a fan of the WWE? I, uh, everybody's a fan of the WWE, DJ. Everybody. I know. I'm a huge fan. Huge. Been watching it since I was like, I don't even know. WrestleMania 3 was the first pay per view I ever watched. That was the first live when I watched Bill. That, uh, WrestleMania 3 was the first one because when we got WWE in Ireland, we got on a channel called Sky, and uh, WrestleMania was the first live kind of pay per view we got. So that was that was off the charts. Um, I had great memories of WWE. Great memories growing up with all the superstars like Macho Man, Randy Savage, Mr. Perfect, uh, George the Animal Steel, uh, you know, Rick Ruse, um, you know, Triple H, The Rock, Stone Cold, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. So many superstars have been to my entire life, and I'm just proud to be able to do the same for uh, hopefully future generations of superstars, kids who are now kids and will be superstars when, you know, I'm old and retired and wrinkly and everything. All right, we're here on the line with the world heavyweight champion of the WWE, the Great White, Sheamus. Sheamus, two more questions for you, all right? Fantastic, go for it. One, you mentioned all those superstars. Who do you compare yourself most to that is a past wrestler? Like, who do you... Uh, who who do you look up to, and who do you follow? Who did you follow as a career, like back in the day? Um, I followed when I was a kid. I was a big uh, when I first started watching. Even though um, Macho Man was a villain, I was a big Macho Man fan, huge Macho Man Randy Savage fan. I don't know whether his, his personality, his presence, the, the gear he wore. I just he, I was literally just glued to the TV screen with him. Um, a big fan of his. Um, obviously, a big fan of Bret Hart as well. Shawn Michaels, the Undertaker. Uh, and you know Austin Triple H, you know, I, you know, I, I like to think that I'm like I take inspiration from a lot of different superstars, you know, um, as I grew up. But I, I'm not really just one person, you know. I've been compared with Triple H a couple of times because we we're more of that fighter mentality, uh, which is an honor for me to be honest with you. But um, I like to think that there's a, there's a lot of different aspects from I've taken different aspects from different superstars I've watched over the years. Uh, Million Dollar Man, Teddy Biasi is a big. Uh, was a big uh, kind of inspiration for me too. I used to love watching him. I used to just want to see him get his rear end handed to him every night. But, <laughs> you know, that, that, that was the great back then. You know, you know these, these guys who just like literally would wind you up even though you're watching at home on TV. And uh, the Million Dollar Man was one of them, and so Mr. Perfect. So they were, they were great superstars too. But I like to, I don't like just to pick one. There was definitely a lot of different superstars over the years that inspired me to follow my dream. All right, last thing for me, Seamus. I got a pair of tickets. To give away right now on the radio. You want to help me do that? Absolutely. Pick a number between one and ten. I won't. I won't go with seven because seven is too obvious. So let's go with five. All right. So if you're caller number five right now, two zero three two three zero one zero one three, you get a pair of tickets to WWE Monday Night Raw at the Webster Bank Arena this Monday night, where you can see Sheamus, who is still going to be the World Heavyweight Champion. <laughs> After this Sunday's pay per view, DJ, thanks for the vote of confidence there. Appreciate it. Take it easy. So, see you Monday night. I will be there Monday night. I look forward to seeing you, fella. All right. Thank you very much.